Boog, you smell that? LSU's finally got an offense. You a believer? Well, I got to see it on the road in a hostile environment known as Austin, Texas. But it sure was good to see a lot of points on the board. And it was amazing how social media reacted. Like, all of a sudden, Joe Burrow had turned it into Joe Montana, you know. Uh, it was fun to see. It was exciting. But I got to see it on the road in a hostile environment against a better team. More yeah. touchdowns and incompletions, Bug. That's Montana-like numbers there. <laughs> it was fun, T-Bob, but let's not overreact, man. That's the name of the game, but we're in sports media. That's what we do. Yeah, I truly understand that. But here's the deal. You know, when you, when you watch LSU play, the things I was really impressed by was the fact that they were efficient, mm -hmm. the tempos, not many mistakes. But you know as well as I know, when you go against Texas, the defensive level of talent they're going to see is going to be better. They still going to have to run the ball. Like, that was the most disappointing thing of the whole night is I didn't see the, the running game dominate the way I thought it should have. Yeah. But all in all, I'm not going to complain. It was exciting. It was fun. The quarterback looked good. The offense looked really good. But you guys know as well as I know, football is a physical game. And at some point, you got to hit somebody in the mouth and run the football. So we're going to have to be able to do that this weekend when we go to Austin. Boogers here every Wednesday morning brought to you by Central Plumbing Company, ESPN, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Alexandria. Breaking news this morning. Ezekiel Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys agree to terms, six years, $90 million, 50 of that guaranteed. Um, I, I guess we all anticipated this to happen, right? Did, did you expect Zeke to get in before the season started? Yeah, I think we knew this was going to happen. Like, Jerry Jones might be a shrewd businessman, but he's not dumb. And we all know the straw that stirs the drink in Dallas is Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, Dallas has spent a lot of money. They're, they're trying to get all the stars locked up. They've done it with... Lyle Collins, former LSU guy, just got a new deal. Jalen Smith got a new deal. Demarcus Lawrence. So they're taking care of everybody. And, and I think Dak Prescott will be next. Uh, but Zeke is in, and I think the Cowboys now position themselves to be among a handful of teams in the NFC that really feel like they have Super Bowl aspirations. So uh, good for him, good for the Cowboys. Now let's stop talking about the contract and go play some football. Yeah, I was going to ask you, they get all these guys signed. Are they, are, are they contenders? Absolutely, and, and especially because of the way the defense played. Let's not forget what they did to the New Orleans Saints last year, that defense on Thursday night. Now, I don't know if they can play to that level every week, but if, if they can play at a high level defensively and the Shreveport native Dak Prescott cannot turn the football over and they can run it, they can beat any team in the National Football League, guys. How's your boy Witten holding up? You know, last time I talked to him, man, he was looking forward to, you know, training camp. He had shaved his head and, you know, donning a new hairdo, and he was ready to go. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm so happy that, you know, he was, um, you know, brave enough to say, you know what, I missed it. I'm going to go back. And, and I think in the end, the fact that uh, the Cowboys have a very talented team, and, and, and I don't know if he would have been able to live with itself had he stayed in the booth and the Cowboys won the Super Bowl this year. So I, I think, you know, him going back, he's, he's kind of scratched that itch that's, that's going on inside of him. So I wish him the best. Uh, I told him he's not going to get any faster, so hopefully he can get stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to Booger McFarland, Monday Night Football analyst here on Off the Bench, one of our 500.3947 ESPN. Uh, so uh, Ezekiel Elliott and Lyle Collins are not the only guys to get new deals. Uh, Jared Goff also got a new big deal, Boog, which means that the Rams – have joined the We Finally Had to Pay Our Quarterback Club. Uh, the Rams have done a great job of roster building while he was on that rookie deal. How do you think this affects their ability to build out that roster going forward? Um, well, I don't think it affects it that much because it's a four-year extension. What that basically means is it doesn't take place until, like, the new money doesn't kick in until 2021. So they still have him on the old money for 19 and the old mm. money for 20. So when you look at this deal, I know it's signed now, but it really doesn't kick in until 2021. So I think for the next two years, they'll be fine. Uh, just like when the Cowboys signed Dak, uh, they'll have Dak for one more year. Now, Dak is, was not a first-round pick, so he doesn't have the fifth-year option. So if and when Dak signs his new deal, it'll kick in next year in 2020. And, and I think that's what you have to do. Like, you know. I probably was born about 15 years too late, man, too early. <laughs> yeah, because really? Because – all the money that's going on right now, man, is is uh, it's really impressive. And I'm happy for these young guys. They put a lot of work in, and they, they deserve their new money. Yeah, a lot of people making generational money right now uh, in, in all sports. 
Yeah, so, Boog, uh, the, the Saints are kicking off things in the Superdome Monday night versus the Houston Texans. I want to ask you about the Texans, though, recently, because just a flurry of moves. I mean, they, they, they had Laramie Tunsil, Kenny Stills, Barkevius Mingo, Jacob Martin, Carlos Hyde, Keon Crossan. Um, you've been in NFL locker rooms. How do you get guys... Lose Jadavian Clowney. Yeah, and they, and they lose Clowney. But, like, how do you get guys up to speed and ready for week one when, when, when they've only been there for five days? Well, I think you first got to start with the basics. Uh, number one, it's easier to play off uh, defense than it is offense. Yeah. And so I think, you know, when you look at some of the guys defensively, those guys will be ready to go. Offensively, Laramie Tunsil, you know, as long as you see, Bob, you know this, when you're on the offensive line and, and you're right next to the left guard, you know, the left guard can help you out. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't really know a play, he can tell you, hey, man, you know, we got – big on big protection or we got a scoop block or we got a, um, you know, a cutoff or whatever. So he'll get help. But from a basic standpoint, when the, with the offense, he'll be able to know what he's got to do. But never, never, ever fail to think that he's not going to get help from his left guard or his tight end or whoever. Uh, one of the most interesting NFC South pieces that I saw uh, this morning, Boog, was that there is a ton of money on the Carolina Panthers going over the seven and a half win total that uh, I think that Vegas has placed on them. When, when you look at this NFC South, let's take the Saints out of it. it. Is the next team up? Is it the Falcons? Is it Carolina? Like, what do you? Is Tampa even in the conversation? Well, Tampa's not in the conversation. Okay. I think the next team up is going to be the Falcons, especially if you know Deion Jones is healthy at linebacker and they can get Grady Jarrett to continue to play up to the level of the contract that he's got. Uh, I trust Atlanta with their offense. Uh, they have an MVP quarterback in Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Sanu, Ridley, uh, Devontae Freeman. Uh, I still don't trust Cam Newton. And so if I were to rank the NFC South, it's going to be New Orleans 1, Atlanta 2, Carolina 3, and then the Bucks. you can put them wherever you want to put them. Uh, so you don't trust Cam Newton, but do you trust Daniel Jones? Come on, Book. He was incredible when you started in week one. <laughs> Uh, there's zero chance. It's preseason. Come on, man. Like, Eli Manning has earned the right to play until this season kind of wets the bed. And I think he's going to play the first five or six weeks, and then they're going to look up. And if they're one and five, then you'll see Daniel Jones. If they're four and two, I think we're going to continue to see Eli Manning. But Daniel Jones is not ready. Like, don't confuse the preseason for anything remotely close to the regular season. What are you looking forward to talking to with Sean Payton about your uh, in your pregame meetings about the Saints this season? Well, who's going to be the you know the next weapon? I, I think the biggest deal for the Saints is they got to find someone else besides Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. Now we think that's going to be Jared Cook, but I got to see it, and so I just want to see uh, if not Jared Cook, maybe it's going to be some of the you know the, the young receiver uh, Deontay Harris, like some of the younger guys that have kind of stepped up. Uh, Ted Ginn Jr., can he stay healthy? So I think there are a lot of questions that have yet to be answered, and they won't get answered until the regular season. But Sean Payton is one of the best production meeting guys ever, man. Like, it's 45 minutes of just gold. So I, I can't wait to sit down. And, man, we just talk ball and we laugh. Uh, but never forget, the Saints are a team that, regardless of what they say, they got high expectations. And I think there's pressure. Yeah. Because they've, yeah. arguably, they're, they're, they've arguably been the – best team in football the last two years and they got nothing to show for it so there's pressure to not only repeat the regular season but there's pressure to win and, and go deep in the playoffs and, and I just want to see kind of what the mood is it's, it's kind of like when T-Bob goes on a diet and he comes in and he's lost about 15 pounds feeling good he's in a really like he's in a really good mood but but we all want to see can you keep it off T-Bob so no I, it's, I, it's, I it's a roller coaster but you can't feel good <laughs> unless you put back on some weight to lose again Boog, I mean come on Boog, real quick have you ever been on one of those teams that, that felt like they had to win with, with Peyton Manning teams did, did you guys feel like you had to win yeah you know in Tampa and, and that's the reason yeah. why I want to ask this question of Sean like in Tampa we had an all time great defense man and we only won one Super Bowl but if you rewind to two years before we won, like, there was pressure. Yeah. We had three or four Hall of Fame guys, and we had nothing to show for it. And, you know, then we, you know, Dungey gets fired, Gruden comes in, and we finally get over the hump. There is pressure to get over the hump. Think about LeBron James before mm -hmm. he won a title. Think about all the pressure that was on him. Like, when you're a generational type player, when you're the all-time passing leader like Drew Brees and you're a first ballot Hall of Famer, I, I, I think there is pressure for him 
not only to get back to the Super Bowl, but to win another one. I, and I know he's got one, but I think with the talent that they have, and you look at their roster, it's a top five talent roster in the National Football League. Now you have to go out and you have to prove that not only can we take the talent, but we can take the talent and win. And, and the last thing I'll say about the Saints, my biggest question outside of, of their mentality is, Who's going to be the juice guy on offense? Because that was Mark Ingram last year. Like, who's going to be the guy that's going to be the physical runner and the guy that's going to bring the energy? I know Latavius Murray is a big bat, but he's not the same runner as Mark Ingram. So, a lot of questions, guys. I can't wait to get to New Orleans this weekend. Uh, before we talk about the Saints, though, Saturday night, Austin, Texas, I will be <laughs> watching. <laughs> and, you know, I, I've been listening to all the chatter, T-Bob, about DBU and everybody's talking noise. Let me tell the audience this. All the talking doesn't matter once the ball is kicked off mm-hmm. because there's a thing. Mike Tyson said it best. Everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the mouth. And so I can't wait to see who's going to hit the other in the mouth on Saturday night in Austin, Texas. Six ten on Monday night in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, the kickoff to the Monday night football schedule with the Saints and Texans. Saturday night in DK Royal Stadium over in Austin, LSU and Texas, kicking it off in a uh, premier college football matchup here in the early season. Boog, Thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the knowledge this morning, man. Central Plumbing Company bring it to you next week as well. Thank you. Always enjoy. T-Bob, make sure you stay on the dive, man, consistently. I, 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 we don't need to get into it.